Hello everyone. Thanks for watching our video. Today we have extractions from Brazilian rattlesnakes. These are Crotalus durissus terrificus. This is a bloodline that is from Brazil. They are also found in other parts of roughly the middle of Central, or of, excuse me, of South America. And we thought it might be fun to try to get some footage of these guys coming down the tube. So this phone is just attached to the table there. That's a little too close for fingers. So I apologize. It's not perfect because it's not focused the whole time because I'm not touching it. But it was a little bit of an experiment. You can let us know what you think in the comments. These snakes are put into a tube, as you can see, and that helps to restrain them and it keeps Jim a little bit safer. It also keeps the snake safer, but if you guys saw right there, the snake put his head up and then immediately turned it around. We are using a large tube and much larger than you would normally use to handle a snake and just uh, pr probe it or potentially give it an injection or something like that in a tube, which is what the tubes are typically used for. Because we need the snake to come out the far end, so this part can happen and Jim is able to pick them up, we use a large tube so the snake will easily fit through it. But that means that you have to be, or Jim at least, has to be very careful when he reaches down to pick them up and ensure that they're moving all the way through the tube. The other thing you might notice when he's tubing the snakes is that they don't always cooperate, but he is fairly good at getting them to go into the tube. And we have that really super fancy duct tape on the lower part of the tube because it makes the snake feel a little bit more secure and like it's going into a little bit of a tunnel. And you can see this one turned around here and Jim is able to watch where the head is. So if the head went too far down, he would just let go and, and start over again. He's not going to hold on to it if he can't see where the snake's head is. And I think on this one you can see pretty well that this venom is uh, pretty clear. And in some populations, this being one uh, in Brazil, these snakes have a clear venom. Um, that's just how they are. All terrificus have a very high neurotoxin. And this venom is being used in Europe actually on cancer research for leukemia and lymphoma. Now this particular snake was not very cooperative. <laughs> uh, you could see it kind of had some strikes there. I think there's actually a few more uh, before it gets in the tube. So I'll just kind of let you watch here for a second. And that kind of flinging with their body that you can see this snake doing that's what we don't want it to do while it's in Jim's hand because that kind of flinging it around is what can hurt the snake if he's got a hold of it um, behind the head. So that's why we like the tube. You all have to let us know if you enjoy this view. We think it looks kind of neat to see him coming down the tube. It's kind of hard, I think to aim precisely at that though. Many snakes uh, here at Kentucky Reptile Zoo we extract from once every two weeks, but these guys are a little bit different. They tend to get a little bit more stressed, you, as you could see this one especially, and they do better if we just give them a longer period of time at, between extractions. So for them we wait a month uh, or three weeks sometimes, kind of depends on how our schedule is, but at minimum three weeks and usually a month in between extractions. And that just gives them time to relax. We try to make sure their life is very calm and peaceful other than the extractions. So just think of this as kind of like a, you know, enrichment times a hundred. This is a big event for a snake and they need to have a calm period uh, in between extractions so that they can relax and feel secure. Now this snake here, I want you to watch closely and you will see this snake actually gave nothing, as Jim notices. And the reason that happens is just because the snake has to decide if it's going to give any venom or not. So for that particular individual, 
I don't know why it didn't feel like giving any venom, but apparently it did not. And I think that also goes to show that Jim is not compressing the venom gland in order to get the venom out. Uh, many people ask us that because the movements of his fingers are typically coordinated with the snake squeezing the venom gland on its own, but he's not squeezing hard enough to force the venom out. If he were, we would have gotten venom out of that last snake. So he's just kind of goosing or encouraging the snake to give more venom when he moves his hands on the venom gland or his fingers, I guess, on the venom gland. Another difference you may notice between these rattlesnakes and other rattlesnake extractions, if you watch some of our other videos of western diamondbacks or eastern diamondbacks, is that the yield of venom from these snakes is relatively small. They're still a decent sized snake. Uh, these here are not real old, but they've got a little size to them. And the amount of venom they give is much smaller than for some other species of rattlesnakes. So the yield from any one individual snake depends on what species it is, whether or not the snake is healthy and well hydrated, and also what kind of mood the snake is in and whether or not it feels very worried or scared that it has to give venom to protect itself. And there have, has been some research that's shown that snakes gauge the size of a prey item and gauge how much venom to give when they bite prey. And this one here also didn't give very much venom. Uh, it just wasn't that worried, even though he was like, okay, let's go. The snake decided not to release much. So this species has a lower yield in comparison to some other rattlesnake species uh, that can be of the same size. But it, they also can decide to give a lot for a particular individual. So one individual may give the uh, large amount for that species and another individual may give a smaller amount for that species. So that's just how it goes. And we just have to accept whatever they decide to give that day. And that's why we have to have quite a few snakes because if we only had one or two that we were extracting from, then there just wouldn't be a whole lot of venom able to be collected. So because there are Several of these, uh, this particular group, there's 10, but we have uh, close to 80 Terrificus overall here. And that way, if one decides not to give venom, it's not a big deal. It doesn't cause us any worry because we know we have other animals and we know that one will come around again to be extracted from. And that way, it's just less stressful. We don't have to worry. And I believe this is the last snake on the video. And there's going to be a shot here in just a second of what the venom looks like, so you'll get to see how clear it is. There you go. And also how little there is. <laughs> As always, we appreciate you watching, and please remember to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from us. Have a great day!